to be here at Bozeman Public Library. It's a collaboration between Bozeman High School, um, Bozeman Public Library, and MSU Library put this together. Um, among other things, when is National Library Week? Next week. Next week, National Library Week too. So there's a synchronicity of events happening. Um, but the main synchronicity is that we've got people who like poetry here. Who either brought their own poems or poems by poets they love. And we're going to get as many read as we can tonight. So um, there's a few rules to get this uh, machine started. Um, one poem, yours or someone else's, and keep it to five minutes or less. That way we get as many people to participate, and once we're through, we can start again for a second poem, or a second five minutes. Okay? Does that sound fair and equal to everybody? Just one poem. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one poem, but not more than five minutes. All right. And we'll just keep it going, and that way you can come up again for your second poem. Um, I once read haikus at a poetry meeting, and I thought, well, that doesn't sound fair. So I called my seven haikus by the title of one poem. So I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't make the MC mad. I've got a 12 foot hook in this room over here. And a gong, but I'm hoping not to have to get it out. Alright? Okay, everybody. Well, let's just start without further, further and launch into some poetry. Okay? Let me get the earwax lubed up with one by Lawrence Berlin Getty from. A Coney Island of the Mind. This one is number 15 in Coney Island of the Mind. I'm Tim Donahue, by the way. I'm your MC for tonight. Every year I forget to introduce myself. I'm just so into starting poetry that I, I forget stuff like that. But I'm Tim. Hi, Tim. <laughs> All right. Constantly risking absurdity and death. Wherever he performs, above the heads of his audience, the poet, like an acrobat, climbs on rhyme to a high wire of his own making. And balancing on eye beams above a sea of faces, paces his way to the other side of day, performing enchantments and sleight of hand tricks and other high theatrics, and all without mistaking anything for what it may not be. For he's the super realist who must perforce perceive taught truth before the taking of each stance or step in his supposed advance towards that still higher perch where beauty stands and waits with gravity to start her death defying leap. And he, a little Charlie Chaplin man who may or may not catch her fair eternal form spread evil in the empty air of existence. 